what's up guys learning with rich here in this video we are going to continue our discussion about the mechanical systems so after learning how to create zones on a single level and on multiple levels so in this video we are going to work with the analytical model all right so in this exercise we are going to simply verify the building space and zone information and view graphical representations of the spaces to verify space boundaries and volumes. All right, so let's get started. So as you can see, our current level here is uh, level two zoning. So what I'm gonna do is from the project browser, I'm gonna open the zoning plan here for level one. Let me double click this one okay and then from this one uh, we are going to open up the heating and cooling loads we are going to view the space so i'm gonna select uh, analyze tab and then after that i click the heating and cooling loads all right so as you can see on uh on this video of the heating and cooling loads here on the left <coughs> left side so you can control the view by using the uh, view cube. So let us just wait for a while. It's really slow. Okay, so this is the preview of our analytical model. So as you can see here, you can use the view cube if you want to change the view just like that. Or you can hold the shift and then you can hold the wheel button of your mouse and then drag that so that you'll be able to to view your space right now uh, what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> on my view here on the details panel or on the details tab so I'm going to expand the south lounge for example let's say for example this one so this is actually actually the zone if we're going to expand that so you'll be able to see all the spaces on that particular zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the 109 lounge. And then as you can see here, these are the details of my uh, 109 lounge space. Okay. And if I'm going to click the highlight here, this one, so I'm going to select that. So you will see here on our preview that it highlights your space here. <clears throat> okay, so you can verify that the space boundaries are as you defined, uh, as, uh, as you define them. Okay, and then you can also view a space in relation to the other spaces or architectural uh, elements in the entire building. Okay, so just remember that so in viewing your model, again, you can hold the shift button and then you can hold the middle button of your mouse so that you can view your model. Okay, so aside from the highlight here, so there is also another tool here that is uh, used to isolate it. So if I click this one to isolate, so as you can see, it is the space displays with all other spaces like uh, half tone. Okay, so the isolate tool allows you to verify one or more spaces even if they are usually obstructed by other spaces or by building architecture. Okay, so you can use that. So you can also unclick your highlight so it will gonna be looks like this. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, this is the space, so I can also select the whole zone here. So, the zone 1 South Lounge. So, I'm going to select this one, and then as you can see, it will now highlight the whole zone. And then after that, it will show you here the properties of that particular zone. Okay, so I'm now going to deactivate it. Right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is let's uh, verify space information. So, I'm going to select again the 109 lunge. 
okay and then here on our space type I'm gonna change the type here so as you can see it's just building it's just a generic so let's say for example for my one online lounge which is uh, this one I want to change the space type of that okay so this is how the designer works in your uh, heating and cooling loads uh, dialog box okay so you select the ellipsis button and then from here on our list on our type setting so let's look for a more specific type like for example this one lunch recreation okay so as you can see Revit MEP provides default settings for space types and you can use the space type settings dialog to adjust the settings as necessary so you can adjust the settings of your lunch uh, recreation if you want but like what I have said earlier Revit uh, gives you uh, default settings for your space types okay so I'm gonna go ahead and select this type and then let's say I'm gonna select here okay now for the construction type so let's click the ellipsis button so you can also check the other uh, parameters here that that you can use so this specifies the space usage and construction materials for the space so you can do it here on your construction type so there's your default one and then you also have this uh, construction number one that you can actually change the property of that okay again if you have any computation or constant or coefficient that you would like to use in your design so you can use construction one or you can actually create a new construction type okay so this dialog box specify the space usage and construction materials for the space okay so let me just select the building again so I'll just use the default here and then I'll just select okay now aside from that you can also specify here the people okay so these uh, settings this specifies the number of people or the area per person for the space so if I'm going to click this one okay so you can select here by space type or if you want you can just specify it you can specify the number of people you can specify a uh, area per person or you can just use the default settings here by space type okay and also you can specify the heat gain per person here okay so I'll just select here okay now aside from that um, you can also specify here the electrical loads of your space so for this uh, parameter here so this specifies the lighting and power loads for the space again I'll just gonna use the default settings here but if you want to change you can click the ellipsis button and then you can change this one again you can specify it you can select actual there okay and then I'll just use the by space type okay so the next thing that we're gonna do I'm gonna select okay so we're going to verify the information that will be used during a heating and cooling loads analysis of the zone so this time around let's go to the zone so I'm going to select now the one south lounge zone and then again you will notice here the properties will change because a while ago for our 109 this is the property of the space okay that's the space type so if I select the zone so it will now becomes a uh, service type okay again you can specify here what type of service that will be running to this particular zone okay you can select from here so there's there are heaps of types that you can select from uh, the service type and then for the heating and in information again you can uh, select the ellipsis button here so this indicates the heating set point and then the heating air temperature and humidification uh, humidification control set point okay if you have any other computation you can just put it here okay and then I'll just select here okay and aside from the heating information you also have the cooling information so this indicates the cooling set point cooling air temperature and 
the dehumidification set point. By not specifying values for the humidification set point and dehumidification set point, you allow the values to be calculated by the loads engine. So this is usually preferable to indicating a particular percentage for those parameters. Okay? Now, for the outer air information, so you can just specify here or you can just type NA for that or just, just use the default value here. So this indicates the outdoor air per person, outdoor air per area, and air changes per hour. Okay? So this is our service type for the zone. Now, aside from that, that you might want to consider in your heating and cooling loads is your uh, viewing. Okay? So let us just, uh, you can go to the general. Again, you can specify this later on. So once you do your heating and cooling loads uh, calculation. So basically, these are just some of the things that you might consider if you are going to uh, put the exact or the details for the spaces and zones in your project. Okay? So let's say, for example, I'm not going to cancel this one or I'll just save settings. Okay? So I'll just save the settings. So the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select the plenum here the MEP plenum. So let's say I'm going to add a uh, space to fill a void. Okay? So let's say, for example, uh, let me just show you again. So let me just go back here and then go to the details tab. Okay, so it's kind of slow. Okay, so my laptop is really slow. All right, so I'll go back again to the details and then let's look for the uh, 109 again. Just do corridor. South Lounge, 109, this one. And then uh, I'm going to isolate that or I'll just highlight. That's the one. Okay, so let me just isolate this. There you go. There you go. So this is the, the space. So let's say, for example, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, um, let me just uh, zoom out. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, this area that we have here. Okay, so let's say this area here. So there is a void. So let's say, for example, there is a void in our second floor uh, plenum space. Okay? So there's a void there. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add a space to fill a void to our uh, project. Okay? So how to do that? So I'm going to cancel this one. Okay? And then I'm going to open the MEP plenum floor plan. And then I'm going to open the level 2 plenum. So let's say I'm going to add the space to fill a void. Okay? So I'm going to open that. And then let me just go to the analyze. And then I select the space here. And then after that, okay. So I'm going to change the upper limit here to level 3. I am currently on level 2 plenum. And then the upper limit is uh, level 3. I'm going to make sure the offset is 0. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, click on this space that I have here. Okay. So let me just pan. Okay. So my laptop is really slow right now. So this is the area. Okay. All right. What happened? Okay, there you go. Oh, okay, so I'm now going to pick here. And then I'll just select here, modify. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to specify this one. I'm going to change it, the name. 
So I'm gonna click the space, and then after that, um, just go to the space here, the name. So I'm just call this one uh, plenum. That's my plenum, and then for the number, I will just type here two one two plenum, and then I'll just select here apply. There you go. Okay, so I just added the space to my plenum. Okay, and then for this one, for this space here, for the properties, so I can specify here if this is a plenum or occupiable. Now for this one, I'm going to go ahead and select the plenum and then you can see that automatically the condition type of that will going to be and condition. Okay, right, and then let's just select here apply. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the plenum space to a zone. Okay? So, I'm going to... Oops, sorry. So, I'm going to select the zone that includes all the plenum spaces on my level 2, which is this one. So, I click that. Okay? As you can see, this uh, space is not yet added. So, I'm going to select Edit Zone. And then... I'm going to add that one. So I'm going to click that to be added. And then I'll just select Finish Editing Zone. Okay, so basically that's how you um, put some details to your space, to your zones. And that's how you view your analytical model. Okay, so in this exercise, we have verified the building space and zone information. And then we also learned how to view the spaces in the preview pane to verify space boundaries and volumes. So on our next exercise, we are going to analyze heating and cooling loads. Okay, so hopefully you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.